Um, well, yeah, so we have one more overview. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna pick up on some of these things we've just been talking about here too. Yeah, for sure. All right. So our mm -hmm. last radical story is not as closely related to the project that we're planning with NOMA. Um, it shares some themes, including community building, low cost architecture, um, and alternative education models, but more so it's just an incredible piece of American history that gets lost in all of the other activity of its time. Um, and it's one that calls to mind so many of the challenges that are being exasperated in this present moment. Um, and that we'll ha continue to have to work through as we push out of this pandemic. I'm speaking about the grand design of the 1967 and 68 Poor People's Campaign, Resurrection City. The brainchild of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, this initiative intended to address the related enemies of poverty and prejudice, and to, in King's word, words, confront the power structure massively. King, however, did not live to see it. He was murdered three weeks prior. We pulled from a few sources to offer a full picture. From May 15th June, uh, to June 24th, 1968, six full weeks, Poor people and anti-poverty activists from all over the U.S. occupied part of the National Mall. Their tent city encampment was known as Resurrection City. From May, oh, excuse me, it was its own town for 41 days. It had a barber shop, a health clinic, a city hall, a mess tent, a general store, a daycare, an education center, community center, a newspaper called the Soul Force, and even its own zip code. The Poor People's Campaign was Dr. King's last dream of a living protest to bring visibility and solidarity to the issue of poverty in, the, in America. In January 1968, King announced in a speech, we are tired of being on the bottom. We are going to Washington, D.C., the seat of our government, to engage it in direct action for days and days, weeks and weeks, and months and months if necessary, in order to say to this nation that you must provide us with jobs or income. He didn't live to see the Poor People's Campaign take shape. He was assassinated on April 4th, 1968, just prior to the planned beginning of the campaign. However, through the leadership of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, caravans, a mule wagon train, a mule wagon train, y'all. Who even knows what that is? We can talk about it. Uh, buses uh, and buses descended on Washington, D.C. from all over the country ranging from Selma to Los Angeles to El Paso to Chicago to Boston. Where King's earlier civil rights campaigns were Black-centered, the Poor People's Campaign sought to form a coalition among Black, Native American, Latino, and white people, and to forge a group consciousness on a systemic national problem. The Poor People's Campaign had four, five core demands. One, a meaningful job at a living wage for every employable citizen. Two, a secure and adequate income for all who cannot find jobs or for whom employment is inappropriate. Three, access to land as a means to incorporate, or excuse me, as a means to income and livelihood. Four, access to capital as a means of full participation in the economic life of America. And five, recognition by law of the right of the people affected by government programs to, pay, to play a truly significant role in determining how they are designed and carried out. Laniel Henderson, who resided in Resurrection City through its full occupation, remembers days being spent attending meetings of the DC government and meetings of DC-based organizations that were part of the Coalition for the Poor People's Campaign, like the United Planning Organization and the National Urban League. At the camp, there, were also, um, there was also something called the university, which was a sort of a spontaneous makeshift higher education clearinghouse that was put together at the camp for students who were coming from different colleges and universities, both HBCUs and majority universities. During the occupation, the nearly 3,000 residents slept in wooden tents designed especially for the initiative. The tents were a marvel of quick, simple, and practical design. University of Maryland architect John Wybinson designed them not only for sturdiness, but also for ease of construction, 
knowing that unskilled volunteer labor would be doing most of the work. The A-frame structure were prefabricated in a way that they could be put on, the flatbed, put on a flatbed truck trailer and brought to the mall and then unloaded easily to be erected. Henderson, uh, Laniel Henderson also remembers that it rained 29 of the 41 days, saying it got to be a muddy mess after a while. And with such basic accommodations, tensions are inevitable. Sometimes there were fights and conflicts between and among people, but it was an incredible experience and almost indescribable. While we were all in a kind of a depressed state about the assassination of King and RFK, we were trying to keep our spirits up and keep focused on King's ideals for humanitarian issues, the elimination of poverty and freedom. It was exciting to be a part of something that potentially at least could make a difference in the lives of so many people who are in poverty around the country. So yeah, we're taking a ton of inspiration from this organizing effort. Um, it's gonna take nothing short of a resurrection to get our communities on track following this pandemic. Um, we know that black and brown and poor people are dying at the highest rates from this virus. Um, and we're feeling the hardest economic blows as well, which means that a lot of our quarantining and social distancing is not nearly as comfortable as it is for other people. Um, and of course, this is all weighing on our mental health. So among other things, we're looking at Resurrection City as inspiration on how to combat isolation and depression and how to create space for community and common unity. And of course, New Orleans is a resurrection city on its own, right, of its own right. We're so inspired by our family and friends in the city as always, and we can't wait to get back uh, to activate all the visions that we have for next summer and beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And I guess um, before, we, before we close then, um, in, in that lane of thinking about um, the Poor People's Campaign as, as a as a movement that really was confronting the power structures. Um, how do you all um, believe that we can, in this moment, uh, collectively reimagine some of these structures that are, that are impacting us now? I mean, I think obviously so much of this um, and what we all operate in is rooted in capitalism and imperialism. And um, just thinking about how we as individuals or as collectively just take steps in the new direction of reimagining these power structures. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I think we need, we need to truly do that. It's, it's a true reimagination. Um, I think that um, Bernie Sanders campaign looks a lot different on this side, side of things than it did before. Right. And I think people are seeing that and, um, you know, following the news and like the way other countries are responding to and this debt that this country is getting into from just sending out these one-time checks, it's like, it doesn't make sense, right? Only allowing healthcare attached with employment doesn't make sense, right? So I, I just hope that people um, are really able to see these fundamental irrational flaws in the system that we've all gotten so used to. Um, and I think that we really, we really need to figure out how to come together to not only hold our government accountable, but you know, at this point, it's like we don't have one, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so in the absence of central leadership, right? How do we pull together to, to establish that for ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then crisis, I think, creates this, this, um, not to say opportunity, but clarity that we have to build it ourselves. We can't depend on these institutions and um, these systems to care about us because they never have. Um, and if we come together in that common unity and start building, then they have to, um, they have to adjust to the power structures we're creating, as opposed to you know us not having a foundation in a um, in a collectivity to come to the table, like we 
need to build our own table, you know, make them come to us and ask us what we need and what we want to um, buy into whatever they're trying to build, you know? Um, I think I think this crisis gives us the clarity that that our community has forever been in a crisis and we need to start um, building up safety nets and um, and safety nets that are going to cradle and care for our people, whether we're in crisis or not, you know, and um, and and it also gives us clarity that we're all in this together. You know, black people, we're in this together like we're not going to get out of it by uh, individualism or capitalism. Um, in America, we're in this together. We're not going to get out, of, get out of it by individualism or capitalism. And humanity, the same. We're in this together. Uh, in all of those individualistic kind of motivations is what got us here you know yeah. the poor people's campaign is like a, a, a massive demonstration of solidarity right um and you know a lot of people say that that's what eventually um wound up getting dr king killed right that come into that place of pooling people together right and not only focusing on black issues but helping people to understand how how we're all struggling similarly and working together um was was the most powerful thing um that he was that he was able to do mm -hmm. so yeah we definitely see that you know happening here in new york um with students that mm -hmm. we work with and and we hope that 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 catches on through all of this as well yeah i think also the 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 project the resurrection city had a lot of failures but the successes were in like illuminating the fact that this is going to be a slow hard struggle there ain't no quick fixes um white folks like i hope they're learning that they can't just hire a strong man and get what they want you know um and i hope black folks around the world are realizing that same thing you know like there isn't going to be any savior we're going to have to slowly build towards like, saving ourselves yeah. Yeah, i com completely agree um yeah I, th I think the the point about the poor people's campaign just stretching across across um ethnicities is is something that's is really major in, in this moment like like you said um shani i think it was just such an emphatic example of solidarity and um i'm very interested and curious as to what that solidarity looks like moving forward and thinking about um how we are all so quote unquote isolated now especially uh, we were before in a lot of ways but now we're literally isolated but like what does the other side of this look like um so just in on that note i want to thank you all for your for your time for um your openness your work um I was already excited about this project, but obviously now you're more excited. So just can't wait to um, get y'all here and, and get 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 working. And um, yeah, um, we can we can leave it at that. Thank thank you all, uh, viewers, for being here. We we really we literally can't wait either. <laughs> we up here struggling, wishing we was down there in New Orleans. Joe's made red beans. Fried chicken. We've had two seafood boils. It's yeah. not the same. It's not. It's, it's not. But but in due time, very soon, y'all can get the real. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you, Nick. Thank yeah. You thank you. And, you know, being being able to have a, a real conversation about all these things, you know, that's really it's so important as artists that we get to engage with um, with art professionals that they're really right there thinking with us as well mm. yeah and I, I think this um this opportunity to talk gave us like an opportunity to dive deeper into our mm -hmm. research and figure out like why are these moments uh these events 
inspiring us? Why are we like keep going back to him? Why are we obsessing over him? And and through that research, we are drawing all these connections between what we intended to do before and the moment the pandemic um, has presented to us like all of these lessons from our ancestors on like how we can brave these losses and still like keep going towards the win in the end. Mm. Well, on that note, thank you and see y'all soon. All right. Thank All right. you. Nick. Thank you.